Hi friends, welcome to our late autumn installment of yoga. Pull up a yoga mat, have your layers nearby, maybe some pillows, blocks, blankets, as you like, and join us. Come to sit in your comfortable seat. You know, if you like to crop up a bit, that can help the, uh, the hips if you want to rise up and then the knees can press down into something if you like. Uh, we'll do a bit of candle gazing at the end of our video. So if you'd like to take a moment and find a candle, if you have one, if not, no worries. You could use a flower. If you happen to have a mandala, you could use that. It could be a photo. It really could be anything you wish. So uh, try to let it be as least uh, complicated as possible. Let's bring the palms together and create some good friction. As a wise one once said, create some good trouble, find some warmth, maybe some heat, and cup your hands, not smush them, but cup them once you have enough warmth or heat over your ears or over your eyes. And if you're choosing your eyes, you might even open your eyes and let the warmth that you've just stirred up. Treat your eyes to some eye yoga, as I like to call it. And then bringing hands to heart center, we'll continue our work with the Kapota Mudra. Your palms are as if they were at the heart centered mudra, but your knuckles come apart and your thumbs move inside a bit. And then you can hold that mudra for nonviolence wherever you feel it's needed most, perhaps in our thinking, maybe in our speaking, perhaps in our actions, our being, our doing. And remembering that truly love is a verb. And we'll open with the mantra that translates to I feel gratitude. And the sounds are Danya Vad. So the Sanskrit spelling might be D H A N Y A and then V A D. Danya Vad, phonetically. What I'm grateful, I find great. By looking for the blessings in my life, I open up a space of light in every experience. I open up the path for grace to flow. I make room in the middle of everything for gratitude. Danya Bad. Join in, listen in, mentally recite as you wish. After inhale, Danya Vad. Two more. Danya Vad. One more. Danya Vad. Breathing the arms on and up. And breathing the arms out and down. You know you can always bring your arms forward and up if that feels better for your shoulders, please. One hand will stay down, the other hand will come open up and over, and the middle finger might just find the tip of your ear to create space between your ear and your shoulder. Finding your breathing. 
your head comes center and we switch sides whenever possible, typically. Other middle finger might find just the tip of your ear opening up space between your ear and your shoulder. Finding your breathing. Coming center, we'll let the fingertips start to lightly touch upon the side of the neck and the shoulder. And perhaps you'll delight as I do in how this simple and subtle movement can help these tense shoulders and necks feel oh so much better. And then of course, whichever we do on one side, we see about doing on the other. Typically, not always, but typically. And then releasing. And since we're just at that half moon mark, <clears throat> let's create a, a few circles as the full moon approaches and we prepare to shine and you'll check in and see if you're going to keep your, your body very long and, and tall, maybe even quiet, or if you're going to bend a little more through the elbows and let your head and your neck grow involved. Finding your breathing as you do so and next time you come center, we'll reverse those circles. Again, you may want to stay very long and tall, or you can take it around more through the shoulders, the head, the neck, the elbows. And coming center, we'll undo, give everything up shake out you can support under your knees if you like and we'll wash away anything from the day the month the week the year that just doesn't feel right that maybe is hanging on it might not even be ours or yours and we know we can release it so wiping away finding all the parts even the head the hair, the face, and the neck, and then tapping in as you're ready, finding all the parts again with the palms of your hands, making your way down the body. Give yourself permission to find insides and outsides and tops and bottoms and even your seat. When you arrive at your low back, you can make fists and let those knuckles tap in and maybe you'll give one arm a good nudge to find your upper back your shoulder and your neck and the other side a little more for that heart center maybe you'll do you'll use your fingertips to find around your head and your neck i'm releasing i'm feeling what you feel and let's go ahead and you could either make a seat with one or two blocks to prop you up, or you can be right where you are, maybe with your blanket, maybe just on the mat, and we'll cross the ankles. And notice how the feet want to go to the outer edges. Press the four quarters of your feet down. Bring your arms long, your hands together. Maybe you'll lean back a bit to engage the front body and give yourself a mighty push to come up to your stance. And we can move our good props off to the side until we need them again. And you'll find your way to the top of your mat where we'll take some pasta vinyasas. So your four corners of feet root and ground really truly two through the top and two through the heel the toes pick up and spread wide and they press back down 
the knees do a little pull in and up, the navel center does a little pull in and up, the shoulders roll. And you may notice your palms facing forward or facing side body. You'll see how it feels best for you. Maybe you'll close the eyes a moment and find your good balance. Maybe you'll have a giggle with your balance. And as you're ready, your arms can reach forward and up or out and up. Fingers interlace, palms press up above you. And we'll take the long arms out to the side. Inhale, we'll open you up and exhale, we'll take you to one side. You're seeing about making a long line with your arms through one set of fingertips to the other. Your gaze might move over your back fingers and then come center and take it to the other side. Coming center, releasing out and up. As you're ready, palms to sky. We'll take the long arms to one side. Now inhale, we'll open you up a bit. Exhale, we'll twist and maybe turn you so you could gaze up, you could gaze behind you. And then inhale, brings you center and we'll take it to the other side. Inhale, brings you center, hands release. One more hasta vinyasa, you know they all can be done uh, from a chair if you prefer, or if you find yourself there. Taking it to the first side, the inhale opens you up and the exhale follows you over the other side where you could let your hands simply be wherever they end up. Your feet are pressing down. Your hands may or may not press down. You might find your blocks, excuse me, to press into or not. As you press to the four corners of your feet, you lift up and we'll take it to the other side, opening up, and then exhale on down. Again, your hands might end up just where they are. You might grab a block and press into your block. You might press into the floor. Pressing into four corners of feet, you lift up, come center, release the hands. And we'll take it through sun salutation, soon to be moon salutation. So from the top of mat so that you can use the length of your mat for your salutations, arms out and up or forward and up. Fingers interlace, palms to sky, exhale, lift the heels, extended mountain tadasana, finding your breathing. Following your exhale to the half squat, maybe you'll take a, a nice stretch reach as you release the fingers and seat. You can come on up. Perhaps you'll find your power arms. Fingertips to the toe tips where you find your blocks. One foot steps back. You find a bit of runner's lunge. You can take it to the knees down plank or you can take it to a knees up plank, pushing through your toes to bring your shoulders forward, lifting through your core and then pressing back through the heels. The knees can come down or the whole body comes down. You're welcome to make your way forward into Sphinx pose or you can take it into Cobra Pose. And Cobra has variations. We've practiced them before. Your hands might be in front of you. Your hands might be closer to you. You might be closer to the mat. You might lift up more. And when you're ready, you press down and take it back to your child's pose where you have more options. Knees apart might feel good for your knees and back. Hands in front of you. You could turn your palms open and see how that feels for your shoulders. Mm -hmm. 
When you inhale, we'll make our way forward to table. You know you can take the puppy dog with your forearms down and your forehead down. You can gently lift your elbows and lift your forehead, or you can take it up and back to downward facing dog. And of course you can walk it out, as we like to say, lifting one heel and then the other, pressing one heel down and then the other. Taking a turbo dog heels lift, knees bend, tail points, gazing to the thumbs, the elbows bend and squeeze in a bit, lots of steps forward, two steps forward, or of course you can hop to the top of your mat where you find the half fold, followed by the full fold if you're practicing. When we move to full fold, we tend to round a bit, not always, but if you're rounding, you'll have to check in and see and feel, is your back happy that way? And then coming up in steps or finding reverse swan dive, returning to your mountain and to the top of your mat. Surya Namaskar, Sun Salutation. Heels lift. In this variation, Vinyasa Krama Sun Salutation mixed in with a bit of alignment cues. And of course, given choices, tends to be more trauma informed yoga, where we're invited to make the practice our own and give ourselves really truly what we need. Half squat, chair pose, maybe those hands move behind you. Perhaps you'll find your elbows keeping the chair pose with your low body. Maybe you'll find the back salute. Fingertips to the toe tips, the left foot, the other foot. Steps back, finding your lunge, taking it to your plank, engaging your plank, taking it through Chaturanga, finding your way to Cobra or Up Dog if you're lifting the knees, breathing, taking good care of you, knowing your options and choosing wisely. Rolling over the toes or bending through the knees to take it up and back to your down dog. Maybe this time you'll press the heels toward the mat and maybe this time you'll push the hips toward or press the hips toward the wall behind you, checking in with your fingers spreading wide, the four corners of your palms pressing, your spine lengthening, finding the turbo dog as you gaze forward, maybe the elbows bend and Squeeze in lots of steps forward, two steps with that other foot for a bit of lunge. Of course, you can hop to top of the mat, finding the half fold, practicing the full fold, if that's what suits you this evening or whichever hour of the day you're practicing. Breathing, feeling that breath perhaps fill the space at the back of your heart. Coming up in step, finding reverse swan dive. And we'll take it through once again. Three will be our lucky number. Surya Namaskar Tadasana, your mountain. Ardha Utkatasana. Or maybe you'll take your feet a little wider if you like. You don't have to, but sometimes it's nice to make space for the full squat with the arms in front of you, or they can start to reach up. You'll see and feel what makes sense for you. Fingertips find their way to the toe tips. The feet might come in a bit and you can step or Hop to your plank and take it through the Chaturanga, Dandasana, Cobra, Sphinx Pose, 
up dog, and all works. Child's pose, puppy dog, down dog, it all works depending on what your body is wanting this evening. This time we'll lift one foot so your heel comes up in line with your hip. Three-legged dog can also become a three-legged table if you bring both feet down and then both knees down. You could reach your tippy toes up as high as they'll go and bend your top knee and maybe even let your hips open up to the side a bit. And then we'll pull that knee underneath and step forward to a lunge and plant the back heel as we windmill on up to the warrior two. Warrior two will turn into archer pose. Your front hand takes hold of your imaginary bow. Your back hand pulls back on the arrow. Your thumbs can stay up and your front knee may bounce a bit. And if you'd like, you can add the sound H-A-R. You're rolling the R. For strength. And then you'll pause and you'll aim at something over that front thumb, inviting more of what you want into this life, this being, this living, and release that back arrow in the direction of your gaze, bringing hands to hips if you like. We'll pivot on the feet and take the warrior two to the other side. So we'll windmill just to even it out and then take hold of your bow in the front and pull back on your arrow. Same thing with the knee when you're ready. Hada, 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 hada. Pausing, aiming for what you are inviting more of into your being, into your breathing, into your doing, and releasing the arrow in that direction. Bringing hands to hips, we'll pivot on the feet once again, and we'll find our way to a warrior one. You have a choice here in your warrior one. If you want to turn it into a high lunge, your back heel can lift. Sometimes we hold the hips while we make that transition. You could find your power arms. You could turn to one side. If your balance is wanting that heel to settle down, then take the warrior one foot in the back. That's more on a diagonal. And if you like, add the sound so, S-O, hum, H-U-M, for the uh, crown chakra, the seventh chakra sound when you're ready. As you wish, join in, join in, listen in, mentally recite, so hum, 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 so hum. Bringing yourself center. Let's pivot on the feet and do the other side. You have that option again with hands at hips, it might be easier or not to lift that back heel. If you feel off balance, your front foot can do a little toe healing, which is a little uh, trick we do on the stand up paddle board to find more balance, take up more space, or bring it back to your alignment. The back heel can settle down, finding your warrior one as you like. Finding your power arms again. So hum, 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 so hum. Coming center hands to hips, we'll pivot and we'll find our way to a warrior three. 
So this time we will invite that back heel up. If you have blocks, you might want to reach for your blocks. Your fingertips, wrists come under your shoulders. Remember blocks have three different levels. If you don't have blocks, maybe you'll hold your leg. Maybe you'll find the wall. You can find your wingspan out to the side, alongside. If you can, that back foot will reach the toes down and your heel will press back. You can also reach your hands forward, breathing. Bringing hands to hips, placing the back foot down, we'll pivot once again, finding your way to the warrior three. How did we do it on the other side? Ah, you can bring your fingertips down, heels under your, well, those would be wrists under your shoulders. You can grab your blocks, your top toes. If you can, you'll reach them down and push back. You can come up one hand at a time, one hip at a time, the wall, can help you finding your flight pattern the way it suits you. This time bringing that back foot forward and seeing about placing your ankle just on top of your knee to find a half squat with one and a half legs, your hands can be at your heart center. You can hold your ankle and your knee. A nice little hip, knee, and ankle release here. I have my foot that's up, flexed. That feels good for my knee. You'll see what feels good for you. Pressing down to lift up. We'll see what happens on the other side. Other heel up. You may hold your hips, you may hold your ankle and your knee, you might bring your hands to your heart center. So it's as if you're moving into your chair pose, but you're doing so with one leg or one and a half legs. Pressing down to lift up, you can shake it out and walk it out. And remember, for a brief moment at least, that we humans are animals. And the, the scientists say and have observed, you may have observed yourself when the animals uh, are needing to release a traumatic event, they shake, they titrate. They might even go into the forest or wherever they live and hide and shake. And we humans need to do that too. So give yourself permission to shake. We'll press through the other foot and you can start with your tippy toes down and your heel up. You can pick that knee up. You can move that knee out to the side. You're welcome to move. I thought the wall was closer, closer to the wall to hold on or not. And maybe you'll find your dancing Shiva arms reminding us of the dance of life. Your toes can reach down, you can flex your foot, however it helps you find your balance. And then you can come out the way you came in, but cross your feet. And whichever way your front foot reached, let's reach the arms. I don't know if you can see my arms. You don't have to stretch this much. I want you to see my arms. Your longer arm hand might grab hold of your other wrist and you'll reach to the side. And if that's too much, you don't have to do it. And of course, you can always start with just one part of you. It might be enough to do the legs and then add the arms on. And then undo, maybe give it a shake, a walk out, a wiggle out, and we'll ground through the other foot. Tippy toes down, heel up. Flexed foot, pointed toes, bringing 
the knee out to the side as you wish. Maybe you'll add on those dancing Shiva arms again, the dance of life. Requesting, we begin again. And then this long bent knee will reach over and becomes a long leg and our arms will reach in the direction the foot that just stepped reached. Your arm that feels longer might take hold of the arm that feels shorter and you don't have to stretch this much. I want you to see me here. You can give yourself a crescent moon or a banana asava. You get to choose which pose to perform here or to participate in. And then coming center, unwinding. We'll shake it out and walk it out. Again, you could use the wall for this next pose. If you're going to use the wall, I would face it so that you're about an arm's length away. So if I were to use the column, I would be an arm's length away. If you like to practice dancer's pose with a belt or a strap, you might find that for a moment or a rolled up towel, one foot roots and grounds, the other foot lifts. I like to hold my hip. You could hold your pant leg, you could hold your ankle or your foot. You're welcome to hold the inner edge or the outer edge. It may feel different for your shoulder depending on which you choose. And maybe your shoulder has a special request. And then this arm could reach up and you can stay right here in this center space. Or you might bow forward a bit. So play with that. Know that you have options. And actually notice if one feels better for you than the other. Maybe more lengthening, maybe more releasing. Gazing to something that doesn't move. And we'll take it into tree pose. Choice one, toes down, heel up. Choice two, full foot under your knee. Choice three, full foot above your knee. And choice four, half lotus in your vrikshasana. Maybe your arms reach out and up and find a Kali Mudra. Sometimes we like to bind here and take the matching hand behind and the, <laughs> the other hand might help you loop that foot a little bit and your peace fingers can find your big toe. I'll show you on the other side and then you receive, oh for me anyway, I receive a pretty nice shoulder release. I'm coming out the way you came in. Let's try it on the other side and see what happens. So the other foot grounds. Oh, we'll move into our dancer's pose first. You could find a pant leg, an ankle, a foot, inner edge, outer edge. Maybe you'll see what happens if you stay right here in the center space and reach up and out of those beautiful, strong legs and hips. Or maybe you'll bow forward a bit. Where does it suit you today in this moment? And letting it change as your needs change. Playing with it, experimenting with it, knowing that you have options. And then maybe you'll move out of the dancer's pose and find your way to Vrikshasana. Toes down, heel up. Full foot under your knee. Full foot above your knee or the half lotus in the vrikshasana so i have my other hand holding my foot my matching hand if you want to go for the bind can go around your back and just find your low back to press into or the inner edge of your waist there and maybe the other if your knee agrees the other hand will lift the foot a bit and your peace fingers it's different on this side for me 
will find your big toe and the other hand can lift. And coming out the way you came in. Shake it out, walk it out. And I need my glasses to tell you the next part. So we'll find our way into a Kriya, which you know is a set of poses, um, typically with a specific goal or uh, idea in mind. Let me see if I can bring this a little closer. This is a Kriya for oneness. And it has I believe four parts to it, yes. And you can take a comfortable seat. For some of us, that means sitting cross-legged. For some of us, that means sitting up on our heels. For some of us, we need to move to a chair or prop with a blanket or blocks. So please make it work for you. And let me tell you a little bit about what we'll do here. So this first part, we sit with a long quiet spine and we interlace our fingers together, thumbs touch, oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. Your thumbs could touch, but you can also just rest your thumbs one on top of the other and have that rest in your lap. So it looks like this. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, you could consider a variety of words. And so I'll invite you to find a word that works for you. Perhaps spirit, spirit, perhaps power, power, perhaps universe, universe, perhaps creator, creator, maybe God, God, maybe you, maybe me. And the suggested, uh, words are spirit and me, me and spirit are one. So if this works for you, so be it. If not, no worries. You're welcome to just listen. You're welcome to join in and you're welcome to mentally recite. And we'll start softly and begin growing louder. And then at the end, we'll breathe in we'll breathe out and we'll go to um, part two. So I'll guide you and uh, let's see. With these Kriyas, there's often a time suggestion. I tend to count up to 36 or 72 or 108, sometimes watching the clock or setting a timer or if you have a, a sand timer hourglass that could work for you. So the suggestion for part one is three minutes. And sometimes we need to start um, somewhere <laughs> and then add on as it makes sense. So let's see. Spirit and me, me and spirit are one. Spirit and me. 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 Me and spirit are one. You and me. Me and you are one. Me, you and me. Me and you are one. You and me, me and you are one. You and me, me and you are one. Universe and me, me and universe 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 are one. Creator and me, me and creator are one. Creator and me, me and creator are one. 
creator and me. Me and creator are one. You and me. Me and you are one. You and me. Me and you are one. You and me. Me and you are one. Power and me. Me and power are one. Power and me. Me and power are one. Power and me. Me and power are one. Spirit and me. Me and spirit are one. Spirit and me. Me and spirit are one. You and me. Me and you are one. You and me. Me and you are one. Nice big inhale now. Slow, steady exhale. Moving on as you're breathing to breath of fire, same seated as possible. We bring our interlaced fingers now to the navel center and we begin a strong breath of fire if this is appropriate for you. We move the diaphragm powerfully and press on the navel. We move so that our shoulders might even jump like we are dancing. We move fast with great force and the suggestion is for two minutes. So breath of fire, you know, is in through the nose and out through the nose quickly and softly. So it's a pump at your belly, pulling in and up. It is not a snap at your belly. You're pulling in and up with a soft movement. Let's breathe to get ourselves started. Beginning after your neck exhale. Excuse me, beginning after your next inhale. You're allowed to take a break, come back in when you're ready. Almost there. Exhaling all the air out, releasing the hands, breathe. Part three, circle breath. Still seated, our hands, fingers interlaced, return to the left, making our mouth into a circle, begin breathing in and out through the mouth, breathing quickly and powerfully. For one minute is the suggestion. We work our way up to it. If you prefer to count sometimes, as I said, I do 36, 72, 108. There are other ways to consider numbers as well. And then we'll go on to part four, which is our last 
part and then we'll rest. So circle breath. We um, begin breathing in and out through the mouth. The mouth is in a circle and we breathe quickly and powerfully as you're ready. And you can practice with me and we'll figure it out. releasing the breath you may need to swallow <clears throat> and when you're ready the hands come up fingers still interlaced to your heart center and you're pressing this is our last part it's called iron steel body we inhale we'll practice we hold the breath tight and lock our hands pressing them against the heart center and then we exhale. Breathe in again. Hold. Exhale. Breathe in again. Hold. Turn left tightly. That's my left. Turn right tightly. That's my right. Come to the center. Hold yourself as tightly as you possibly can. Hold the breath as long as you possibly can. Exhale, relax. That was our practice. So let's see if we can do it once more. And eventually you'll do this just once, but I want us to get the hang of it. So you're not holding your breath until you pass out. You're just holding your breath until it reasonably, please, makes sense. Inhale deeply. Hold the breath tight, lock your hands, press them against the heart center, exhale. Breathe in a second time. Hold. Exhale. Breathe in. Hold. Turn left tightly. Turn right tightly, return center, hold, release. That is our Kriya for oneness perhaps to help us silly humans <laughs> understand that somehow we all share this beautiful planet and the air that we breathe and the water that we drink and bathe in and cook with, our beautiful rivers and oceans, our mountains, our lakes, our ponds, our streams, the valleys, the hills, the prairies, the jungles, and so on. At the end of our practice, we take rest. We need to release that good back. If you have any layers that you want to add now, as we slow down a bit, you can do that now if you'd like. Or sometimes as you rest, you might just want to have something close by. So give yourself a moment to find some warmth if it suits you. And then we'll, uh, we'll see about bringing your legs long while we're in our seat. 
and do a little releasing of the back while we're up here. You may want to shake those knees out a bit. <clears throat> and you can give one knee a good hug and this foot might step over the long leg. You can keep this leg long or you can bend the knee and bring the foot closer to you. Your knee and your hip and maybe even your ankle will tell you which you prefer. And then we'll inhale, lengthen. And we'll give ourselves a spinal twist. So you're turning your body toward the knee, giving it a hug. This hand might move out to the side a bit or even behind you, lifting up, lengthening, exhaling. Turning to gaze to the side or behind you. If the twist doesn't feel good, please do less of a twist. Sometimes the twist feels really good and you want to see about giving yourself more of a twist. Sometimes the inhale offers you a little length and sometimes the exhale offers you a little more of a twist. This arm might move outside your knee. This is a place where sometimes we like to find a mudra with our hands, a gesture, each finger having a different connection and meaning. Coming center, we'll do a little counter twist. Coming center, we'll unwind and do the other side, if possible, to balance you out. Stepping over the long leg, bending the bottom knee, lengthening as you're ready twisting again as it suits you. Remember the bottom leg can lengthen if you prefer. Remember the top arm can keep the hug or start to move outside the knee. Easing out to the side. Or maybe you start to gaze behind you. center when you're ready, a counter twist. And then unwinding and we'll find our way down as you wish onto the mat. Maybe uh, you lower one hand or one arm at a time. Of course you be sure there's safe space behind you. Maybe you lower one vertebra at a time. And once you reach the floor, you might take the feet wide and let the knees rest against each other for a moment. You might even stay as you are, or you can bring the arms out to the side and do a bit of what we call windshield wiper side to side. If anything is in your way, you can move it. If the windshield wiper doesn't feel just right for you with the knees and the feet apart, come back to center and see about bringing the knees and the feet together and release just to one side with both legs and feet and that might feel better for you. So allow yourself to move through whichever phase you're in and give yourself, please, what you need. These are suggestions that I'm offering. And then once, if you're in the windshield wiper and you move to one side, you might stay there. You might prop under your knees and or feet. You might lift the foot of that side and let it rest on top of the other knee. And then your feet release and we'll take it to the other side if that's what you're up to. If your feet and knees are together, you're also taking it to the other side if you haven't done so already. If your feet and knees are apart, you'll lift the foot that is connected to the leg that is closest to the side you leaned toward with your legs and then you let that 
foot rest on top of the other leg. And sometimes we like props under our knees or our feet. And of course the back of head can be to the mat. Your gaze can be straight up to the ceiling, which is neutral for your neck, or you can gently turn your head away from your bent knees if your neck wants to grow more involved in the release. And then your head comes center and your legs come center and you release as you like. If you're near the wall, you can take your legs up the wall. If you're happy to be on the mat as you are, you can stay there. You're welcome to prop any part of you. You're welcome to cover up with your layers. You have lots of options for resting supine on your back, for resting on your side. Sometimes we want to rest on the belly prone. You get to choose what works for you. Sometimes we just want to sit in a meditative seat. If you'd like more of a Shavasana or rest time, please feel free to um, Press the pause or stop button and come back when you're ready. Typically we do some breath work and a little bit of our mantra meditation and we'll do our candle gazing after our resting. I feel my shoulders up near my ears so I'm going to release them even here. Giving any part of your body that might feel like it's hanging on permission to let go. Fingers, toes, ankles, wrists, knees, elbows, hips, jawbone. Even your tongue might rest gently in the roof of your mouth. When you're ready to come back, you might begin to awaken through fingers and toes. You might begin to circle through ankles and wrists and give yourself a good stretch if you like. Maybe even finding more length on one side and then on the other, giving your knees a good hug, rocking and rolling. You're welcome to find your way to one side or forward and up as you wish. Finding more layers if you like, propping as you wish. If you have your candle or whichever you're going to gaze to, maybe you'll just be sure that your body can face the candle and you want to be able to see the, the flame. I just need to turn mine a bit. Maybe you'll just turn your body. And we'll do a bit of moon and sun breathing, Chandra uh, Vedana and then Surya Vedana. I'm taking my right hand because this is the way I was taught. You don't have to do it this way. My index and middle come in, my ring and pinky stay out, and the 
thumb then closes the matching side. The other hand could rest in a mudra. And I'm breathing just through my left side. So my left hand makes letter L. And this is moon pranayama. Or moon pranayama. It's calming. It can be cooling. And then we'll switch sides. So I like to take my ring and pinky and close the side we were just breathing through. And now we'll breathe through the thumb side, which is the right side, the sun breathing, pranayam or pranayama. It's energizing. It's warming. When you feel complete, we'll release the hands. Um, I like to take Zen Mudra. The hand you use the most might rest inside the hand you use the least. The thumbs touch. You could bring the handle up so it's eye level, which is one of the suggestions. Mine is a bit lower, but it's further out in front of me. So I will gaze now to the darkest part of the flame. feel complete with your gazing, if you like, you could close your eyes and keep the image of the flame with you. complete returning the hands to um, their heart centered mudra or kaputa mudra and I want to tell you who gives us this translation of the danyavad that we practiced at the beginning of class oh, I hope I have it here well their name is Jen <laughs> I thought I had more information for you. Maybe I do. Anyway, Danyavad is a Sanskrit uh, mantra. And depending on your teacher and your school, you might receive different uh, translations. And this one is from Jen. <laughs> we began with, I feel gratitude. And let's close with I am gratitude. 
So this uh, would be Kritana Hum. Kritana Hum. Kritana Hum. It sounds like K R I T A H N A H. New sound. Hum. H U M. My true self is always grateful. I am connected with everything else in the universe. I am like an ocean. The deeper I go within, the more I connect with the stillness of my true self. Gratitude is the beacon that guides me to that place where meaning, truth, and love exist. Gratitude connects you to the joy that's hidden in plain view, patiently waiting to be seen. Kritana hum, as you wish, after inhale. Kritana hum, three times. Kritana hum, Kritana hum, Kritana hum, Thank you, friends. I feel gratitude for you, especially for my friends who have hung in there through these very interesting few years and have kept the studio going. I am so very grateful for you. I am grateful for new friends and I am grateful for all friends as we hang in there together. Be well. Satnam. Namaste. Be in touch if you'd like your own video. Uh, you can request a, a, a theme or something you want to work on. Be in touch if you want to have a private at the studio. We're back in the studio Monday through Saturday. We have classes morning, noon, and evening. Uh, and you might see some goodies over here. We have children's yoga as well. So all ages, all stages, and all abilities. Come visit us sometime. Take good care.